Let's continue working on this iPhone 6S that Jonathan brought in last week. Now the phone would not power on and we detected a short on this area of the board. It's the MOSFET that's located on back of the board. We removed the MOSFET and some capacitors around it and the short was gone. So right now what we have to do is replace that MOSFET. We did not have it in stock. We placed an order and we got it. So we're going to be working on this one to see if we can get this phone to work again. I recorded the first part last week. Hopefully I can still find it because I deleted a lot of the unwanted videos. Right now, if you look at the donor board, this is an iPhone 6 size donor board. We're going to solder a similar chip, the MOSFET. It's three by three. We do have it in stock and we're going to solder whatever capacitors we took off from the sides. And the broken trace that you see, which is pointing from the top right of the IC onto this pin here, is not necessary because there is no component here. So if we look at the board diagram, we can see that uh, the broken trace, which is the red labeled dot here, it's connecting to this component, but the other end of the component is ground and this pin doesn't really connect to anything. So we do not have to run any wires. All we have to do is replace the IC, replace whatever capacitors we took off, and we'll try our luck and see if we can get this phone to boot up. I'm just adding leaded solder on top of unleaded so we can easily clean those pads. Okay, and to clean the pads, we're going to be using our hot tweezers along with a piece of wick. And I introduced this technique in a previous video where I did not know if it was going to work to use hot tweezers and a wick to desolder solder balls. And it worked great. I was working on a 12.2 inch Samsung tablet that had no Wi-Fi and we removed the BGA chip. And I thought, why not try hot tweezers and a wick to see if we are able to wick those solder balls and it worked so we're going to be using the same technique here Very nice. I'll link the video down below where we first used this technique and it was a success. So you can check on the tracking number to see if we got it. And yesterday the mailman did not show up. Mailman came in yesterday and uh, the shop was closed. He came in early. So he left a note that we have 10 packages and he marked the packages as delivered. So customers are calling in to check on the status and we tell them we did not get the package yet. When they track it, they see that the package was delivered. This happened to us before where the mailman marked the package as delivered and it wasn't and he brought it in the following day. So hopefully we're going to get the packages today. Hello, how are you doing? Good, hey. I'm, uh, What's going on? Well, I have a friend of mine that passed away and I'm trying to find Yes. So I pulled up these old hard drives and I can't make them work. Yes. I don't have the connectors. Yes. The right connectors.
Okay, so the chip is in place. And I know a lot of you are wondering why are those two capacitors touching each other? It's okay. They're supposed to touch. Let's look at the board diagram. They are touching. We do not have to spend the time to separate them because they are connected to each other and they are supposed to be touching. So that's how we're doing our board. Let's do this one here too. Then we can try the phone right now to see if it will power on. Without wasting too much time, let's see if we can power this phone on now we're going to be using the red meter that we are selling on our website we still have few left in stock uh, i do not know when the next shipment will be from china so what we're going to do is plug the 6s tip into this meter okay and yeah, let's see I'm going to plug this into the battery and charging port area of the board. And let's see. The first thing I want to do is power the meter on. It looks like we have a short. came back okay so we still have a short on the board the short was released when we took out the MOSFET, but now that we put the MOSFET back, the short came back. Let me power it on and look at the thermal cam. We see two areas heating up. We have this area here. On top, what's this? Something is heating up right over here. Oh, look at this capacitor. This capacitor is probably what's causing the short. I'm 100% positive the short is coming from this capacitor right here. Look at this. Let's remove it and test again. Okay. So let's see if we still have a short. Okay, so we're gonna power it on. And the short is gone. <laughs> the short is gone, look at that. I did not power the phone on yet, but the short is gone. We do not see three point something amps being drawn. Let's test. Press and hold. The short is gone, but I do not think the phone is booting up.
Yeah, I do not think the phone is booting up, but we got rid of the short. Uh, let me plug a screen onto the motherboard and see how the phone is behaving. But according to the meter, the phone is not booting up. I'm going to plug the screen in. The screen is connected and let me connect this meter onto the board again and see. The phone is not powering on. Let's take a look at the thermal cam again. It looks like the Tigris chip may have something to do with this. Let's go ahead and replace it and see if that will solve our problem. I forgot to put the microscope on. I just realized that. I removed the Tigris chip and we're going to replace it. Okay, let's clean up. And let's go ahead and solder a new Tigris chip. Okay, that's it. Fixing a phone depends on how much time you want to spend on it. I cannot afford to spend the whole day working on one phone. I gave this one enough time. If it still does not work, I'm going to call the customer to come and pick up and move on to doing something else. We have a lot of devices in the queue and I just cannot afford to keep working on one phone for long hours. Okay, so let's try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, then our work went for nothing. I'm still going to post this video either way. Whether it works or not, I'm going to post it. Let's plug the cable in. Okay. Power on the meter. So far, so good. And let's power the phone on. It's working. <laughs> it's working. It's going up. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Wow, 0 0.8. It's working. Wow. That's awesome. Let's put the screen on and see if it boots up. I mean, honestly, I did not want to work on this phone if it did not work at this point. Okay, I saw your YouTube. Uh, I have a 2000. 80 bit S430, uh, S430, the key 
won't turn the ignition. And so my wife took the key uh, battery out and the, the uh, circuit board inside of there, a coil fell off of it. Oh, okay. Are you local? So what I do is, are you open on tomorrow? Tomorrow open, 10.45 to 6. I like your video. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Okay. More Mercedes-Benz keys. I'm very happy. The phone seems to be working. We did not try the actual screen on yet, but I can tell from the meter if the phone is booting up or not, and the phone is booting up. I was about to give up on the phone, and I did not want to spend any more time on it, but the Tigris chip looks like it solved our issue in addition to all the things that we did on this phone. So let me plug the screen in. I mean, I got too excited too quick. Maybe there's something else wrong with the phone. Maybe the display is not working. Maybe the chestnut IC is not working. But as far as I can tell, the phone is booting up. And we can tell by this red amp meter that we had plugged into the phone. So let's see. I need to hold everything. Okay, so uh, the phone is, the meter is on, and we have to press and hold the test button. Right there. Yes, yes. <laughs> I told you. I told you it's going to work. Looking at the amp meter, we can tell by the way amperage is going up that the phone is booting up. So it's working. Amazing. Amazing. So what did we do? We replaced the MOSFET. We replaced the Tigris chip. We removed the shorted cap that we discovered under a thermal cam. We removed some capacitors next to the MOSFET, but we replaced them with only two caps. And all we have to do is back up the phone for the customer. So that's it. I'm very happy. My time did not go for nothing. I'm glad the phone worked out and I'm sure the customer is going to be very happy to know that we are able to get his data back. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.